When it matters, maybe you miss. If you're in the military, you're Delta Force something. If you're not in the range, firing thousands, thousands of rounds. Well, then when you pull and fire, maybe you're not putting one in the head, one in the chest. Maybe you're missing it. And maybe in that split second, it costs you your life. All these things eventually will be tested. You have the time right now to repair that, to ensure the skills don't get spoiled like some fruit and fresh and easy. See, the thing about life, we're going to die, right? Eventually, we're going to die. But our legacy can live on. The impact can be non-perishable forever. But it's got to be built right. And we got to take advantage of the time we have right now. If you want it bad enough, you find a way. Today, because we're not teaching that to our kids, we tend to say like kids don't want to do the work. But in reality, it's uh, when we're failing them because we're not leading them the right way and teaching them yeah. you know, how to fish. You know what I mean? And so like the consistency of work, Monday, get better. Tuesday, get better. Wednesday, get better. Right. And you do that over a period of time, you know, not like one month or two months. I mean, it's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. And then you, you know, you can get to where you want to go. Yeah. I, I can't remember. I think it was Bill Gates who was talking about that. He talks about how like we we overestimate what we can do in one year and underestimate what we can do in ten years. No doubt. Right? Like it's like that, you <laughs> no know. Doubt. No like, doubt. Like I think everyone thinks about it, like, what can I do right now? Like, how yeah. can I make it happen? But like with you, I think people always ask you also, like, you know, how do you deal with losing or failure? What I'm intrigued by is how someone like you deals with winning. Because you've won again and again. And like I was saying earlier, you you know, you want obviously we know you you won in basketball big as an athlete, but you've, you're winning now, even in the work you're doing here as a storyteller, as a producer, right? Yeah. It's amazing to see so many incredible awards coming through. How have you dealt with winning? Like when you win, what goes through your mind to help you to continue um, winning? Well, it's a little different. Like in basketball, it was different because you know, I expected to win, mm. you know? Like I expected us to win championships. I expected us to win five, quite honestly. I expected us to win eight. Um, and so when you have that vision in sports, it's a direct competition. Like I know how hard they're working. I know how hard we're working. I know what their strategy is. I know what ours is, it, you know? So it's a little different. So when we went in the NBA, it was like, yeah, we expected to do that. But now we, we're going to come back and we're going to do it again, you know? And so it's that constant, like, all right, you're churning. You win one championship. I'm back in the gym the next day working, getting ready for the next one. Now, uh, it's different because it's not about the awards. You know, you just wind up trying to create something that's that's going to inspire uh, someone mm. that hopefully, you know, through that inspiration, they can inspire somebody else. And again, like a lot of things that we've talked about here, um, certain things serve you to a certain point and you have to use them. But at a certain point you need to. And that's also where I see a lot of people get stuck. Like it serves you to a certain point, but you need to know what's that next step. Right. And what's the thing that's going to get you to the next level? Um, so I agree when you first start, I think, I think it's, you know, it's a great tool and a great motivation mm. to have, but at a certain point you need to, uh, know when to let it go. Mm, yeah, that makes good sense. So that's because you see this in a lot of like the athletes documentaries and with, you know, bodybuilding and everything. It's always that same story of like, oh, you know, I was a little skinny guy and no one respected me and girls didn't hold eye contact with me. But then I started lifting weights and now girls hold eye contact with me. It'll certainly get you started. And, and there is science to show that. Uh, avoiding fear slash avoiding pain is highly, highly more motivational than wanting pleasure. Mm -hmm. And so it seems to be, I'm, I'm trying to even put together like a self-improvement plan for someone who's, you know, particularly down bad. Let's say some random 18 year old who's just doing all the bad habits. He's not being productive. It's weirdly like a toxic mindset, but it's kind of beneficial for a guy like that to have that sense of like, the dark side of motivation mm. to like get back at that girl. The hard is, try, yeah. try dialing them on the phone. Yeah. You probably have a lot more success. How did you do with negotiations? Uh, nego Sorry, not negotiations, uh, rejections. Rejections? I've always dealt with rejections very, very well. I was very pragmatic. When I got a no, I obviously store the number, store the lead, call them back next week just to see if it was a, it was a final no. I had a very organized system. Mm -hmm. And I think that's uh, a key to my lender's success. We're very organized people. He's probably more organized than me. He calls me disorganized, even though I'm 10 times more organized than the normal person because he's slightly more organized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, quite annoying. But um, yeah, I was, I was extremely organized. I was extremely polite. I was very polite with rejections. And I'm, I've been polite with rejections in every single way my entire life, which is the best way to be. Woman rejects you, be polite. Sales customer rejects you, be polite. Be polite always. I, manners gets you, you know, very, very far. 
And a lot of the customers who then maybe changed their minds called me back because I was such a pleasant at the time young man, mm. and they they liked me and they you know they had a, I built some rapport with them. So no, when you get rejected in anything in life, say you go for a job interview and you get rejected, always behave like a gentleman and always behave uh, amicably because it will eventually, if you live long enough, backfire if you start treating rejection badly. So I've always been fine with rejection. You've obviously been and you are in high just in general bro like i've there's been so many people in my life right like that like have come and go and i've done nothing but been good to them like you know i feel like when you when you when you give people sometimes an inch they'll take a mile yeah and i've seen that with so many people in my life come and go and i wish i knew from the jump that like they were solid that's all yeah yeah i just really really wish i knew i've changed so many people's lives right yeah and I just really wish I knew that I was changing the right person's life. Life, bro. I can relate on different in different scales, different levels. I've had friends, I've had people that work for me, people that like met me and they were fans, and then they worked for me for eight years and completely turned south. That's crazy. Me. Like imagine working with someone for eight years, every person that they met, all these all these connections, and they come, they turn, they use it against you. <laughs> I've had that dude. Yeah, bro. No, that's. I've had people living in my house turn against me, take as much as they yep, can, turn against yep, me. Yep, yep, turn it right against you. Yeah, bro. It's it's scary. But I think, I think you will always have maybe one or two people who you can always just be like, he's real. 